Hello there. Happy New Year from us here on Talking Europe on France 24. We are getting stuck straight into 2019, which promises to be a busy year for the European Union. It's half a billion citizens and, of course, the institutions and the MEPs here at the Parliament. And we have three of those MEPs here with us to take a whistle-stop dash through some of the major topics of the year ahead. Starting off with Sven Giegold, German MEP from the Greens Group. Thank you for being with us. Uh, next to you, Deirdre Clune, Irish MEP uh, with Fine Gael and the EPP. And uh, across the table from our guests, we have Norika Nicolai, Romanian MEP with the ALDE group. Hello. Vice Hi. chair of that group, in fact, I yes. want to say. Well, I think we have to start with probably the most pressing issue of all, Brexit. As we record this programme, uh, the turmoil is, as we know, continuing in Westminster. Uh, the first question really is... Uh, how concerned are you all about where things stand? Perhaps if I come to you first, Ms. Nicolai. Uh, I'm deeply concerned because, uh, unfortunately, this Romanian uh, presidency, it's unusual presidency, it's not a business like usual for European mm. Union because of Brexit. Mm. Uh, Your country has to oversee this process yes, to a certain degree. Uh, we, we have huge interest and uh, <coughs> good relation with uh, Great Britain, with our historical relation. There are a lot of Romanian citizens who work in uh, Britain and we have a very good trade mm. uh, with uh, Great Britain. We export a lot, 1 billion euros, it's our excedent uh, uh, in this export and we believe that we can uh, have problem uh, Especially if the Britain live without agreement, Indeed. and uh, yeah. I am uh, deeply concerned. Next mm. week we expect this uh, crucial vote, but I'm not very optimistic because I remember what's happened inside of the party of Madame May, mm -mm. and uh, I believe that will not be an agreement. You uh, believe there will not be an agreement? No. I'd like to, well, I'd like to ask the other side of the table. Deirdre Clune, well, um, is Ireland very closely concerned well, as yeah, well? I am really, really concerned. Ireland is really concerned because we are the countries that is most affected. Even, even some studies would say more so than the UK themselves. You are most affected most than Most affected now, in two yeah, ways. Because of, our, right. because of trade, because even to access the mainland Europe, goes Border. across the board, across the UK. Uh, but I, I, mean, I think this week, in the vote we saw in, in, in the debate and the amendments that were, well, that were voted through, you see Parliament taking back some bit of control mm. away from the government that seems to be out of control and didn't know where it was going. But well, some in the UK are not happy about that. They think the parliamentarians are overriding the, mm. the people. That's, Is that in yeah, itself that, dangerous? Well, you know, we're going. We're getting to. I think we're getting to a point now where next, if if the, if the vote is defeated, and it's largely expected to be defeated, her proposal, uh, then she has to come back mm. uh, within three days, three working days of, of an alternative proposal, and that'll mean that will be a motion that can be amended. So you get a sense of where, where Parliament stands. Is there a majority for a Norwegian-style mm. arrangement or? No, no deal at all. But I think what, what, what you're seeing now is that in parliamentarians, the majority seems to be... Nobody wants a no deal, or the no. majority do not want a no deal. But, um, I mean, it is... Some do want a no deal, some, though. Some do, but the they majority... They a clean break. Some, but, but the majority in parliamentarians... Now, what we've seen in the amendments this week is that there is a majority there for a no deal, mm. so let's work out some kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely worrying. The clock is ticking, and I'm quoting Mr. Barnier there. End of, end, of May, end of March, are we going to looking at another referendum? I think that would be divisive again. You know, we have a decision. It would be, maybe it might tip the other way, but I don't think there'll be a huge majority. And then you have, um, you know, extending Article 50. Who knows? We're in the unknown territory. And, you know, it's a difficult... It's a real challenge for Romania, but then it's, it's really, it's, mm. it's an important time to be there. And it's very, very challenging, but really, I think it's, it's, it's an important well, let's time ask, to hold the presidency. Let's ask uh, Sven Giegold uh, from the, the most populous country in Europe, from Germany, uh, very much seen as a linchpin country. Uh, some, some people in Britain think that the EU has been bullying the UK in this process, that the EU is trying to keep the UK in. Where do you see things right now? <laughs> so, first of all, uh, there was an unfortunate choice by the British people, which we have to accept. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, the British people were pushed into that referendum result with lots of false promises. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the negotiations, the real stand of the European Union was fully united. It was not a German agenda. We are all equal in that union. We have equal member states and uh, it was very important uh, 
for all of us, also here in the European Parliament, where we had a broad majority in favour of the common negotiation position, which means equal obligations and equal rights. So you cannot cherry-pick on the common market, on the European Union, when you want to have the same rights, you need the same obligations. And that's not and, bullying. And this is not mm. bullying, it's simply fairness, which is a very British idea, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and for us, it was also in Germany and in, uh, the, for the Greens, but for all uh, pro-European parties, very important. And I say that uh, very yeah. clearly to you from yeah. Ireland, we were not ready to, uh, to make any compromises to your disadvantage, because we are all equal. Right. Well, we are not ready to say mm. what the British mm. tried in order to give some goodies to German industry, <laughs> we uh, make compromises yes, yes. for which you have to so pay. No, we solidarity. are no. in solidarity. Mm. But so, um, yeah. just a, a last question. Yeah, just yeah. Um, on, on the bullying question, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> I mean, the, the compromise that Theresa May got before December from the European Union, they, they agreed to extend the proposed backstop across the UK. Now that was that went against. That was a difficult thing to agree at European level, and then Theresa May can't even can't sell it to her Parliament. So I don't think the word bully. I mean, the, the UK understands and, and is, has been a member of the European Union for 45 years, 46 years this year, understands well the procedures here. It's based on rules, it's based on fairness. They know them well. In fact, the common market, the single market, was designed by the UK. So, you know, it's, uh, um, I, I think it's, it's, there's a lot of rhetoric, but in fact, the decisions right. we take in, in Parliament are actually around the the council table. So that's well, what One last word, perhaps, and then we'll move on to talking about no, Romania. Uh, my, my... Uh, believe that it's the, this Brexit is an uh, effect, a clear effect of populist approach in the politics, uh, because Cameron unfortunately answered to the Farage uh, question in the same way. Uh, there is show a break between the citizen and the political leadership, and uh, for this reason, I am not very comfortable with what's happened now, and uh, I am afraid. Uh, maybe we learn this lesson, we, uh, the country who remain in the uh, European Union, and we prepare to change something in our uh, political behaviour. Mm. Well, we will have to uh, obviously wait and see how it all pans out. I feel like I've been saying that for a very long time. Uh, in this programme, though, let's move on to another topic. The Romanian presidency of uh, the Council of the European Union. Uh, a milestone for Romania, the first time it's taken on this role. Uh, one After of our... 10 years of accession, we are the first time uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, president moment. of the uh, rotative uh, in the Council. And I believe that... Uh, it's a very provocative issue for uh, for my country. Well, I would like to uh, just show, uh, just to explain for those of our viewers who aren't completely au fait with this concept, uh, France 3 uh, reporter Anka Ula has prepared a little explainer for us. Yeah. And then we'll talk about what this means for Romania and for the EU. As the European Union enters uncharted waters, one of its newest members has taken the helm. Romania took over the rotating presidency of the Council of the EU from Austria making some officials in Brussels nervous, including EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. For prudent negotiations, you also need a readiness to listen to others and the firm will to put your own wishes aside. I have some doubts there. Romania has been at loggerheads with Brussels recently, particularly over the left-wing government's planned overhaul of the judiciary, which the EU says undermines the fight against corruption in one of Europe's most graft-prone states. This reform has also driven a wedge between Romania's government and its population, sending thousands of people into the streets in the biggest anti-government demonstration since the 1989 revolution. It's also exposed a rift between center-right president Klaus Johannes, a keen pro-European who represents Romania on the European Council, and the left-wing Social Democrats in Parliament. Prime Minister Viorica Dancila urged lawmakers to behave during the six-month EU presidency. Regardless of your political opinions, please think first of our common interest as an EU member state. I'm only asking for decency in your political language and to refrain from actions or political messages that could affect Romania's image. The role of EU Council President is partly symbolic, but Romania is expected to set the EU agenda and act as a diplomatic go-between to reach consensus among the 28. That responsibility is even greater as the UK prepares to leave the EU on March 29th. And with parliamentary elections set to take place at the end of May, amid rising Euroscepticism across the bloc. 
So we go a little overview. Uh, Jean-Claude Juncker suggesting he thinks Romania perhaps not ready for this role. Demonstrations against the government. Uh, your party, a junior partner in the coalition. Is this really the right time for Romania to be taking on this, uh, this role? Partly symbolic, but very prominent, of course. Is the time. I don't know if this is the right time, but is the time for Romania to have this presidency. Uh, I don't uh, like to speak about the Romanian politics uh, because we need uh, maybe a show for uh, speaking what's happened in Bucharest and for understanding, especially. Mm -hmm. Because uh, speaking it's easy, but understanding it's more difficult when you look only uh, one side of the uh, position, of the opposition, and if we look to the uh, declaration of government party. But we are prepared. Uh, the technical dossier are uh, already started in our uh, approach because we work with uh, Austrian presidency mm. and uh, it's not a problem. From political point of view, uh, despite the, the debate between the government and the president, uh, the Romania is uh, entirely prepared and as you saw, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, kind of symbolic role. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we are able to promote unity of Europe, we work for this, we are uh, prepared to work all per, with all political forces who want a strong Europe and uh, we are ready to negotiate for this. Okay, we don't so... have a hidden agenda, mm -mm. which is uh, really important, yeah. and we are open to discuss with all uh, members of EU in order to have a good presidency. Well, we've Not got two us, members of... Not for especially for uh... European Union. Sorry, <laughs> of, oh, my colleague. No, we have got two members of uh, pro-European groups, mm. the EPP and the, the Greens, uh, around the table with us. Uh, Romania has been facing a lot of criticism, a lot of uh, suspicion of uh, how well it's going to manage the presidency. Uh, any, any concerns from your side, uh, Deirdre Klee? Uh, me, I, I don't have concerns. I mean, I think you're right. This is the time. And I think I'm confident Romania will, will step up to the plate and be able to do it. Ireland held the presidency in 2013. Again, a small Country. But there was a lot of preparation put in beforehand and um, a lot of additional, mm. uh, just uh, the work at home before that. There was a lot of additional um, people brought on board. And, you know, the, like, the real, the nuts and bolts of being a presidency is ensuring that you guide the legislative work and that you make sure it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's delivered. Uh, we, uh, this morning in our transport committee, we approved one, two, three, four files that will now go to trialogue where the commission uh, the, or the council, the presidency, will be responsible for ensuring that they are completed. So, and, and we've seen Romania here for the last six months preparing for this day, this point. So I'm confident from a parliament point of view, certainly, that uh, Romania will do the job in terms of the day-to-day -day guiding files certainly. and making sure they're delivered under the presidency. There's obviously Brexit, banking mm. union, climate change. Mm. They're Indeed, these are need, massive need, dossiers, aside, aren't media, they? Migration, I mean, yeah. migration yeah. is going to a be lot of really tough difficult. Dossier. And it's good that we presidency. have a country, I think, from Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. on that side, that will, you know, help in terms of another okay. voice. In so the an Eastern European migration. country giving a, a, a newer member state its one. first go. <laughs> yeah, I think but are those perhaps refreshing. risk factors as well? I might like to just come to Svenki Gold before we're running out of time a little. No, well, look, it is not the role of the other member states to judge the ability mm. of co-member states whether they are... Um, ready for presidency and it's also not the job of the commission president to so make tough. such statements afterwards we can have a balance sheet and uh, but before that this is simply not good European behavior uh, and sure. I think we have a lot of legislation to finish and we will hope that Romania does the utmost in the council to make it happen with us. But what, where I have serious misgivings, and I have to say that, is of course, and your president of the ALDE group uh, also said it very clearly, uh, there are problems with corruption and uh, European values in Romania and uh, certain legislative projects for Romania, which put into question uh, the commitment of the Union in all the member states uh, to fight corruption and uh, to be on the side of democracy and the rule of law. And that is very important uh, that uh, we, and I'm curious what, what you are saying on the demands of your own uh, group presidents and whether you are fully supportive of Let's them and whether response. Romanian government will deliver. Lai. Yeah, if you'd like to quickly respond uh, to that. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes in the language of European politicians, there is a kind of double standard. Uh, I remember the resolution against Romania where he, uh, was blamed because uh, in this uh, rally uh, they considered the reaction uh, of the uh, gendarmerie, Romanian gendarmerie, 
was uh, uh, too tough, too strong, but it's the same uh, what happened in France with uh, uh, Gilets Jaunes, with uh, President Macron. I saw there, I saw in Belgium, I saw in Germany, in many European countries, but also a strong the reaction. Review but review proceedings, so yeah. uh, no, 10 years uh, after the perception, election. it's uh, one That's issue, and the reality, it's uh, well, there are different. There are specific issues. demands from the Commission, though, about uh, concerns, rather, about judiciary reform. Uh, currently being put through we, by the Romanian government. We can discuss government. about this, uh, but uh, I, uh, I consider that our uh, reform uh, is uh, under, very, in, under very good uh, way. We respect the Venice Commission uh, recommendation, and uh, there is something different. Uh, if we need to be a little bit sincere, uh, the judiciary is not a part of European uh, common policy. It's a matter of subsidiarity. An independent judiciary is. Yes, an independent judiciary. We've seen it in Poland this and Hungary. We fight where... all for this, but mm -hmm. the Romanian have some yes. uh, specificity. But, but... It's difficult to explain in, the, in these topics uh, the issue, but maybe we discuss uh, for long on this issue for the, the so people there are, there need are to understand concerns. what's happened mm -hmm. in the reality in Romania. Because mm -hmm. it's a motion, we can understand the declaration, but the area reality is and uh, there different. Are, there are procedures to investigate Certainly. if there is an issue, and I think that's important. So you've seen with Poland and the uh, the ECJ ruling before and now Perhaps from, the, from uh, early the January now. Perhaps the presidency throws the spotlights more onto that. the country holding mm -hmm. the presidency in that sense. That's true. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'd like to thank you all very much for taking part in this discussion. As we start off 2019, indeed, What's many subjects sure? to come back to. Romania, we oh. should go into another time, yes. I think. Thank yeah. you so much. Norika Nicolaia from Romania, Deirdre Kloon from Ireland and Sven Giegel from Germany. Thank you all very much for taking part. Thank you as well for watching. We'll see you in part two of Talking Europe just after the news.